So what is the speciality? You must have heard about cardiology. You must have heard about neurology, neurosurgery. And probably uh, since the COVID pandemic broke out, you must have heard a lot about intensive care and critical care as well. What exactly is this speciality is something we all should know and we must actually understand. This speciality is one that encompasses the diagnosis and treatment of a wide variety of clinical problems representing the extremes of human disease, the extremes of blood pressure, the extremes of oxygenation and carb ventilation, the extremes of acid-base balance, extremes of kidney function, everything. Therefore, it's not a single consultation speciality. That means you just don't see the patient for 15 minutes or 10 minutes, write your prescription and then leave it for the patient and the other doctors to follow. It's a caregiving speciality. That means you stay there with the patient, you monitor what's happening, you, add, you judge the response to your actions, and then you react to the, those uh, responses. In order to achieve this, a person who calls himself a practitioner of intensive care or critical care needs the knowledge of pathophysiology of the disease. Once you understand the pathophysiology of the disease, you should understand what devices can be used to ma manipulate or manage the pathophysiological derangement that has caused the disease. So once you know that, yes, this device is the right one for the patient, you also know what procedure needs to be done to get the device hooked on to the patient. And all this has to be done with a sound knowledge and awareness of the ethics of delivery of high quality intensive care. We should be very, very clear whom we are going to offer critical care to and who are the patients who are not going to benefit from critical care. So this dynamic speciality is a speciality that brings into focus a very, very crucial interplay of physics, physiology and pathology. The physics comes from the way your blood pressure is generated, the way your blood, pressure, blood vessels respond to it, the way air is delivered into the lungs, the way gas is exchanged across the alveolar capillary membrane. All this is physics, which ultimately in a human system translates into physiology and deranged physiology becomes pathology. So you need to understand the physics and pathology, if you, physiology, if you want to treat the pathology. That's what this speciality is all about. So for you to be a critical care specialist or an intensive care specialist or an intensivist, in short, what core competencies are needed? We are not a single organ speciality. We are a multi-organ speciality. So you look after everything from the brain down to the peripheral vascular system. So you need to have a knowledge of the problems across specialties. You need to know how the stroke patient behaves, how the subarachnoid patient behaves. You should know how a patient with airway edema presents. You should know how an emphysema looks like. You should know how an asthma behaves, a pancreatitis behaves, a pregnant lady behaves, somebody with aortic occlusion behaves, somebody who has PTE behaves. So a burnt patient, how does it behave? An intoxication, how does it behave? These problems across specialities is, should be in your software if you want to call yourself a specialist in intensive care. Once you know such a whole lot of information about different specialities, you should also know in depth about the pharmacology related to different specialities and the crosstalk between different pharmacological entities that you use to treat these patients. So it's not enough if you just know about antiplatelet agents and heparin or statins, but you also need to know their interaction with some of the other drugs which you give to treat infection or you treat heart failure or you treat something else. As I said, being safe is very important in intensive care, especially when you do procedures. So how safe can you execute a procedure is also a core competency needed for intensive care. Critical care is all about data. You get data from the blood picture, from the ventilator, from the IABP machine, from the bedside monitor, from the ultrasonogram, from your lab, from the microbiologist. There's so much of data. And how you integrate all this data and get together a working plan for the patient in a given day is what determines a good intensivist and excellent intensive care. It's also a dynamic speciality, and the number of publications that come out in intensive care is probably the second highest or the third highest in the world across the last 10 years. 
and it's a dynamic speciality. Evidence keeps changing and you should be competent enough to understand the published data. So what is this data telling me? Can I extrapolate this into my practice? Is also a core competency which every intensivist should strive to have. But it's also a very, very high stress environment and where death happens quite frequently. While we try to treat it, we are not going to be successful in all our efforts. Death will happen. How you counsel the family regarding the patient's situation, what is your plan, what is the patient's response, and what is the outcome? is what your counseling skills are also essential for. This is another core competency which an intensivist should be having. But again, remember, the high stress atmosphere of an intensive care is not for a single person or a single flag bearer to win the match. It needs team spirit. Right from the housekeeping staff who wheels in the patient to the nurse who checks the blood sugar to the respiratory therapist who administers nebulization to the resident who takes notes and takes history, to the junior consultant who makes plan for the patient, to the nutritionist who plans the nutrition for the patient, the dialysis technician who starts dialysis. Everybody is part of the team. Everybody's contribution is crucial. And as an intensivist, you should be able to be a team player. You should be able to understand the psyche of the team, the ethos of the team, and then fit into that and work well to make a successful intensive care team. So what are the courses that are available in India which can make you uh, an intensive care specialist or somebody who's competent enough or trained enough with all the core competencies which we have discussed? The, the topmost thing that people now are looking for is a DM in critical care uh, through the NEET exam or through standalone exams which is after MD in medicine, MD in anesthesiology, or MD in pulmonology. You can also do a DNB in critical care, where also the eligibility criteria is extended to those who have surgical uh, qualifications as well. The Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine runs several courses, a two-year Indian fellowship in critical care, a one-year Indian diploma in critical care medicine, or post-MBBA MD and post-diploma candidates. And these are all, there are more than 200 such trained institute, training institutes in the country. And there's an exit exam and it's well accepted qualification in critical care. For those who are just after MBBS and you want to have a career in intensive care, the Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine offers the certificate training course in critical care medicine, which is a two year program post MBBS, which is again, having qualified with a exit exam with theory and practical. There are multiple fellowships that are available in the country, like a six month fellowship in cardiac critical care or liver transplant care. And then there are certificate courses like the one the Medvarsity is running very successfully and very professionally as well. Overseas, you have the Australian critical care course or the College of Intensive Care Medicine, the fellowship, which is a five year program one of the toughest critical care exams in the world, but a very, very gratifying course to do if you want to work overseas. Similarly, the Royal College of Intensive Care Medicine has now got its own fellowship. It's a two-year program where you have to work in the United Kingdom, uh, in England, and then you will do the degree. The American Board is a well-established course in critical care and pulmonology. You can mix it with internal medicine and pulmonology or you could mix it with nephrology and critical care or sleep medicine and critical care. The multiple permutations and combinations are possible in the United States. The European Diploma in Intensive Care is an exam which is open to all. You can work in any recognized hospital in the country, in your own country, any hospital that is accredited with any national program like the FNB, the DNB, the IDCCM. You can work there for a couple of years, appear for the part one, and then go, uh, take the clinical exam part two, which is now also conducted in India. And there are specific fellowships overseas, like a transplant fellowship in Singapore, trauma fellowships all over the world, burns fellowships in Australia, and there are so many other fellowships in Canada, which you can do for cardiac and cardiac intensive care as well. So 
once you have done your basic training in critical care, you have done your MD in medicine or pulmonology or anesthesiology, and you have done your DM, does your training stop there? I'm not. I'm sure it's, it's not going to stop there. The specialities are now the, the, the super specialty of critical care is again getting subdivided into niche areas like neurocritical care, transplant critical care, and obstetric critical care. There are fellowships offered. Even the Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine offers a fellowship program in neurocritical care. The society also offers a two-year fellowship in ECMO. And there are societies which offer uh, critical care fellowships in transplant medicine and obstetric critical care. A lot of trauma fellowships are available all over the world, mainly in Singapore, Australia, the United Kingdom, and mainland Europe. So you can actually become a super, super specialist uh, after doing this, you could focus your rest of your life in neurocritical care. You could become a dedicated ECMO specialist. You could become a uh, dedicated trauma specialist after you have finished your uh, super specialty training in critical care. So what are the pros of this specialty? You know, what's good about this specialty? The good thing about this specialty is a dynamic specialty in the sense that there is change every minute. The patient's ventilation, oxygenation, hemodynamics, urine output, metabolic stasis, acid base, sensorium, gut function, everything keeps changing as you see, as you watch the patient. If you put a time lapse video, it's like you know a dynamic process that's going on in a 24 hour period. What's true today at 8 a.m. this morning with my patients is not true now at quarter past four in the afternoon. It's such a dynamic speciality. And as I've said before, it's a caregiving speciality. If you look at the name, it's called intensive care or critical care. If, apart from palliative care, there is no other speciality which has the name care incorporated in the name of the speciality itself. So it's a caregiving speciality. You need to sit with the patient. You need to spend with the time with the patient. And you need to be there with the patient when the patient needs you. That's the beauty of critical care. And it's a wholesome approach. You don't look at the brain as a separate entity. You don't look at the heart as a special uh, separate entity. You don't look at the liver as a separate entity, but you look at the critically ill patient as one entity. And that's how you deliver high quality critical care. As a result, what you achieve at the end of the day is a very gratifying outcome for patients who otherwise would have died. And that requires continuous enhancement of the skill. What I learned four years ago, I may not be able to execute today if I am not practicing it and I don't enhance it. As an example, 10 years ago, the, the use of ultrasound for central venous cannulation was not mandatory. Very, very few units in the country used to practice it, but now it's become standard of care. Today, if you are cannulating your central line without ultrasound, you are not doing the best for your patient. You are probably not following guidelines. So that's the kind of enhancement you need to do for all your skills. What are the what is the flip side of this speciality? It's a good speciality, it's a dynamic speciality, but you come here by choice. You come here to critical care by choice because it's the path to success is very long. It's not that you do 100 angiograms or 200 hip replacements, you become a superstar. You need to work hard every single day for at least five to six years before you make a name for yourself in critical care. It is partially a dependent speciality in the sense that it is dependent upon other specialities to uh, utilize your services sometimes. If you are, a, you know, you made your name for yourself, then patients may actually come for you. But till then you have to depend upon the pulmonologist, the internist, the orthopedic surgeon, the cardiologist, the neurosurgeon, to entrust their case patients to your care. Because you actually spend so much time, you think so much, you analyze so much data, you do so many procedures, and you deal with so many organs which are failing at the same time, it's emotionally an exhausting specialty. So you need to be mentally strong to be a good intensive care specialist. And the timings are erratic. You may not be able to just pack your bags at 5 p.m. every day and go back home. Just as you are unscrubbing and getting ready to go home, some patient might crash who might require initiation of ventilation or may need an ICD. So you have to do it. You can't just walk away saying, my time's up, buddy, I'll leave. It's not going to happen. So that will actually result in a shortage of personal time. Over a period of time, you will begin to 
arrange or organize your day in such a way that you will be able to uh, uh, you know make time for yourself but that path is very very long and you should be prepared for it but once you choose a career in critical care what is it that you will learn yes you will learn a lot of skills you learn a lot of procedures you will learn a lot of subject you will read, read a lot of articles but most importantly, what you will learn is teamwork, because without a team, intensive care is zero. They won't achieve anything as a single person in intensive care. And because you deal with unstable patients, you deal with gadgets, you do a lot of procedures, and you keep doing that every day, you will develop a safety culture. You will develop a safety of infection control, financial discipline. You will be emotionally more stable. You will counsel others. You will be able to be the peacemaker when two parties are fighting in the hospital. So you will actually end up being a good administrator if you are a good intensivist as well. So why should you be an intensivist? My simple answer is by being an intensivist, you will make a difference. You will make a difference to the patient. You will make a difference to his family and you will make a difference to the organization. But most importantly, you will make a difference to yourself.